In this video for Firefight 2nd Edition, we're going to explain how shooting works. So we're going to look at kind of shooting in the open, shooting in cover, and what will happen when your kind of troops get removed from the table, I guess. So, Matt, you're sadly going to shoot my lovely rats over here. I am. I don't, I don't think they're so lovely. <laughs> <clears throat> so my uh, Enforcer Operative team here have decided um, that they're going to shoot these guys here. They obviously consider them a quite a nasty threat. Yep. Um, now shooting, uh, as with movement, you measure your range from the leader model. Okay. But so, but it's from my leader model to the closest point of your unit, which right. is why it's important to um, one of the re first reasons is where you put your things because it might be that you you can actually get out, out of range or put yourself too close to some of my weapons. So as long as he's in he's in range or you measure the range. Any eligible uh, weapons from my my squad because yep. they might have different weapons with different ranges. Okay. Any ones that are within that that range are all eligible to shoot. Okay, so I guess you might have some units where someone might have a shotgun or a flamer or something like that. Yeah. That might be out of range. Correct. But the rest can all shoot away. Yes. So at that point, it doesn't matter where these are. So you imagine that they're actually moving around and getting the best fire positions, etc. What well, as part of that action. Yeah. Um, but uh, the range is always to the closest model. In the, in the target unit. Okay. Um, so as we uh, discussed before, um, we're going to look at the number of dice for the weapons that I'm rolling. Yep. Now, uh, my, my laser rifles here were all two dice. I've got five guys, so I'm going to be rolling ten dice to, to yep. you. Remember my shoot value was four, so normally I'd need fours to hit you, but because your guys are brave and skulking behind this wall... Tacti they're in, tactical. That's right. They're in cover. <laughs> okay. Uh, now that's minus one, so I'm effectively sub uh, subtracting minus one from every result I get. Yep. In effect, my what I needed fours, I now need fives. Okay. Um, so statistically, obviously half of these are going to... Yeah. Can you roll hit. in there? Yeah. So looking for fives or more. I've got one, two, three four there. Now, unlike Dead Zone, we don't have exploding... I was just about to ask if they exploded, no, yeah. No exploding eights in this game. And I think so. the reason for that, I guess, was because you're rolling quite a lot of dice here. Yeah. And if they're all starting to explode... Yeah, you, you'd lose track, especially if you've got other re-rolls and stuff yeah, as well. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, obviously with Dead Zone, you, you kind of... Five or six dice is the most you're going to typically roll. Unless yeah. you've really put yourself in a bad position yeah. or a great position. So if I take these out, one, two, three, four, I'll clear these ones away. So I've got four that have hit. Right. Now I need to roll to damage you. Okay. So this is where I, I need to ask you what your armor is. Ten. Ten? No, I'll check. Don't believe you, Rob. <laughs> it's five plus. Five plus. So now I roll these dice again. Now if I had something like a, a, an armor piercing on my weapon, that would reduce your armor. Yeah. But I, I don't have anything there, so I need five plus to match, okay. match or beat your armor. Just the one. Okay. Now that means I cause one damage, so that means you lose one HP, one health point uh, okay. off your unit. Now I believe they only have one each. each yeah, my HP models. is one. So you would remove one of your models. So I literally take it out of the unit? Yep. And, and can I choose? Out. You can choose, yep, whichever ones you want. And remember, it's always the leader that goes at the end. Okay, so the Mr. Pointy will be left at the end. So that poor rat gets killed, yep. is off the now, table. Your big guy here is actually uh, a unit upgrade, a specific unit upgrade of a type called a, a, a drone. Yeah. Now, uh, drones, uh, like the leader, can't be removed uh, normally by, by shooting like that. They survive until the end yeah. because they're a unit enhancement rather than really rather than a model in their own right. Um, the only way you can take them out is with a sniper. Okay. And then you can actually, I could actually specifically say, no, remove that model. Oh, right. So rather than me choosing, you'll be like, actually, I want you to get rid of that yes. heavy burst laser or, or whatever the equivalent. You've got to take yes, that one out. take that drone out. Yeah. Okay. So the, are you done now? You, you've that would you've be killed the, one poor rat. Yeah. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be able to shoot again because that would be a second uh, of, the, of the same action. But I could, if I hadn't moved already, maybe I could move back, do an advance and move back into cover or something like that myself. Okay. Um, so yep, so they've now done. So that cover really helped them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, now at this point, what I'm going to do is, I think that's quite a nasty unit and they're probably going to come and, and eat me. So we'll talk about it a bit later, but I'm going to I'm going to spend a command point at this uh, uh, at this stage and do a second activation. So right. rather than hand back to you, yeah. I'm going to use one of my uh, command dice, which I'd have rolled at the beginning of the turn, and say, okay, I'm going to activate a second unit. Okay. Now, I'm going to do that once. I can't keep activating units. Once you've activated a second one like that, I have to pass back to you. So I guess that's what we were talking about earlier on, about it can be quite dynamic in how you react to your opponent. So if you see an opportunity to kind of activate another model, then it then might actually help you turn the it. tide. Yeah. 
So I, I'm going to spend that command point. I'm going to move him. He's going to advance out. Uh, he also has 612, so he's going to move 6 to there. Now at that point, he's got a clear line of sight to them that's not blocked. Uh, if it was partially blocked either by them or by the hedge, again, they'd be in cover. Okay. Um, so he's now going to shoot, shoot them. Now he has 6 dice on his gun, um, and he also requires a... Four plus. And this time it's just a direct You're four. You're out in the open, so it's just going to be fours as, as normal. So we roll for that. And I've got uh, one, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So um, five plus again for their armour. Five plus again. Now, I don't have uh, any armour penetrating again, but I do have pinning. Okay. So at this point, I've hit you. Even before I was causing any damage, as long as I've hit you once, your unit is now pinned. Okay, so I can mark that. So, so I've got a little the, like, token. Quite cool uh, little uh, token there. So pinned. Now, what pinned means is when they activate, the first thing they have to do is remove, spend a short action to remove that pin marker. Okay. And also, if they uh, in an assault, they're at minus one to hit. Right. And any nerve test, they take a minus one as well. Okay. Um, so it's quite good then, I guess, to to negate some. If you're worried about someone actually to pin them, yes. Actually, will then make them worse and and stop them potentially charging or something like that. Uh, yes, it wouldn't be able to sprint, of course, because they have to spend a short, the first short action um, clearing the pit. Okay. And then a sprint to do the, the longer movement yeah. is a long action, so they won't be able to do that. Now, you can clear pin markers with your command points okay. um, at the end of the turn if you've got any left. So he's going to, so he's, uh, so he's pinned them just because he hit them. I'm yep. now going to roll to damage uh, with your fives. five. plus, yep. Uh, just the one. So again, you lose uh, the one model. I'll take this one up at the back because I think he's the most cowardly. Okay. And there we go. At this point, he's he would be activated as well, and I'd have activated both of my both of my units. Okay, and that's really the basics of shooting. Absolutely. So. Now, if I had, um, say, I had a heavy weapon in there that was different, had its own keywords, or, yeah. or maybe it had armor penetration, and the other weapons didn't. It's quite simple, like in any other system, you just roll different colored dice. Okay. So maybe, you know, I, I had a weapon that had gave me four dice with armor penetration, I'd roll those separately. Right. Um, and, then you'd, and then you'd still apply the damage and everything for the unit as a whole in the same way. Yeah. Or if um, a weapon might have another keyword, like you say, if it's got it burns or those kind of things, you could roll those separately to yes. see if it... Yes. Okay. Some, some of those and some of those things like it burns may, may ignore uh, uh, cover for being in buildings, things like that. So there, there's, there's, there's a, variety of, uh, a variety of weapons. And normally... A unit can only shoot one other unit. There are some keywords which allow you to, to split your fire, but that's specialist units tend to be able to do that with a with particular keyword. Okay. So I think in our next video, I'm obviously going to be annoyed that I've been shot at, so it's time to get into some assaulting. So I'm going to kind of fight with my vim. So join us in the next video, and we'll explain how you fight in Firefight.